All right, everybody, I got David Mendez here. David Mendez is an absolute G. He's in client ascension, and we're going to talk about what he does, and we're going to try to give you some value in here. But first, I want to start it off by just, David, you telling us, what do you do, and like about how much are you making? Yes, sir. So um, I, what I basically do is I launch high-ticket coaching programs for people, like a done-for-you service. How much I'm making right now? I'd say, because my offer is a little bit complex in, in terms of offer structure, um, I'd say around the 40 to 50 Ks a month, something like that. Um, Cause I have performance based type of thing, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, that's that's about it. Um, and before that, before actually doing that, cause I was, I was a sales rep and uh, I sold coaching, I exclusively sold coaching offers in the industry with one, like some of the largest companies in our space. Um, I was doing like 15, 20 K a month commissions and between the 10 to 20 K range. And that's when I joined client ascension. Cause I was like, yo, I want to do my own thing now. And, uh, it was funny cause I went to Daniel and I was like, listen, bro, you gotta help me out here. Cause I want to do my own thing. And then it was like, oh, but you know, we really only work with businesses that already have something going, but then I insisted a lot. And then it was, okay, okay, okay all right, give me your money. And, um, and then I joined Client Ascension, right? And um, me and Daniel, we went back and forth on potential ideas of potential offers that I could run, right? Initially, we were going with something else, but then um, I saw this opportunity and I was like, yo, what do you think of actually doing this? And he was like, rip it, let's go. So he did a bunch of things. He told me to do a bunch of things, which I did. We put it out there like maybe a month after we put it out to the public. I probably got my first, that's when I signed the first client. Um, and uh, then I went on to make him a lot of money in a very short period of time. And then I put that case study out there and I just got a rush of money in like two weeks that came in. Mm -hmm. um, from that, um, in around the, again, the 40 to 50 K range, uh, instead of fees, right. We're, that's all mm -hmm. we're talking about. We're not talking about percentages, but, uh, and that's basically it. That's, that's how we got here. Yeah. Good stuff, brother. So you're the perfect example of somebody who had some skill and acquired some knowledge. Like you would have had a job, you were a sales guy, and then you took what you learned from being inside of the job and translated that into actually owning your offer. Which is which is like something I touch on a lot, where it's like, yeah, it's cool if you want to do sales or maybe work in somebody somebody else's business, but if you if you want to really scale, you need to own the offer. And now you're in a position where you actually own the offer, and you're very very good at what you do. And I, I and I said this to you as well because with the first with the first round you did your first client, like you're you're really good at it. So you're able to do that thing where it's like a performative based agency where you prefer to get a percentage of the deals because you're, you know, you're going to drive an astronomical amount of money, right? So if somebody, when somebody's really good at something, you, you got to take that step where it's no, you're taking performance base and that's exactly what you did. And now look at you. It's pretty dope. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I'm glad you touched upon that because I like, I've always been, I actually think that is the best way. If you want to start a business, that's probably the best way to go about it. You just work on somebody else's business, um, like learn in the trenches, literally, like earn your stripes, take all that knowledge and, and basically accumulate it with other things that you're probably going to do in the meantime, because this business game is not like, it's like a, a straight line. There's going to be like, you're going to go here, then you're going to go here, you're going to go there. Like, so basically just, synthesize all of these things, all this experience, and then you come up with something in which you can have basically some sort of unfair advantage in. And this way you're not commoditized. You're not yeah. have to compete with everybody else playing in entry level markets. So so tell me about your process and how you launch coaching programs and like any any kind of value you can give in regards to that. No, absolutely. I'd be more than happy to do that. So basically I have a set of principles that I kind of guide myself to. And the, I guess a couple of those would be, the first one is 
like if you just understand um, that if you if you find out what a specific group of people want, right? If you just find that information, you can literally like create that from thin air. Like this is literally possible with online business. Uh, either you can create that or you can arbitrage it. It doesn't matter, right? So the first thing is I I pair up with people who actually have some sort of expertise. So this is the first step of the process because I don't want I don't want to work with with bumps, basically, we haven't done, because people, I think there's a big misconception, like people want to do coaching offers because it's it's a huge leverage business model and it's super profitable. But if you don't have actually, like if you don't have anything to coach people on, then like, I don't want to work with you. Like that's the yeah. first thing. So you can't just so make a coach thing, offer if you don't know yeah. what to coach on or you aren't good at it in the first place, yeah. Exactly. So that's the first thing. First thing like that I, I really think influences the or and impacts the results is I, I actually only pair up with people who actually have some sort of genuine expertise that they can teach. And then um, ideally, they also have some sort of audience already. So they're already actively on social media talking about the things that they do. So basically what's happening here is because they are on social media existing and talking about the things that they do what this is going to happen is you're going to attract people who are interested in, interested in, in, in that specific topic, right? Which is a great thing. So now we have an asset, we have a, we have an audience, right? So with that audience, what we do is the first, the very first step in my process is to directly talk to the audience. The problem I see with a lot of people is you want to create these offers, right? So what they do, like the default response, which is not a bad thing, but what they do, the default response is okay. What is, what is everybody else selling, right? I'm just going to go sell that, which is good because, and, and that's a great way of actually getting started um, any business because, again, it's easy. It's low barrier of entry, but the problem you're going to come across is uh, you, you're basically, you're competing with all these people. Who have already been selling this offer, right? You're probably going to tap into a market that's, if not saturated, it's going to go there. Uh, so basically... In my process, what I do is, okay, instead of doing that, right, and looking at all the other solutions in the marketplace, I'm going to go talk directly to the audience and figure out, okay, people, what if, like, what are we at? Where, where is the market at right now, basically? What, where is the audience at? And the way we do this is, like, we literally, like, give a value proposition. We, we offer some free consults, whatever, and we just run in, like, discovery calls where we, we get on those calls and we're like, okay, so tell me about it. Like, wh what have you been up to? Like, why are you interested in this? Uh, what have you done so far? What other solutions have you tried in the past? And why do you think that those didn't work? Uh, like, if you could actually do this, like, what do you actually want to accomplish? And I just go directly to the market and I get direct feedback. And this is key because everything I create, create after that is literally based on what the market has told me. So just in that little step in the beginning, I already have advantage because as these other people are operating on assumption and they're thinking, oh, the market wants this. I know what the market wants because I directly speak to it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So once that is done, we, we get our market research. We know what these people are looking to accomplish. Now, everything else that we're gonna create after that which I call them launch assets are going to be based on that. So what are launch assets, right? So these are basically things um, that I didn't really understand it. <laughs> when I first started, I didn't really understand what they, what they were, but now I do. So basically launch assets are, are pieces of like what I call core pieces of content that are evergreen. And the whole purpose of those pieces of content is to accelerate the conversion window and the customer journey. So what do I mean by that? Like in, when people follow you on social media, right? And they're interested in what you do and they want to do something similar. Basically, there's a thing called the conversion window, which is the, the minute they get exposed to you, it's going to take them like a, a, a specific timeline for them to get to a point where they want to jump on a call with you and potentially buy, right? So these launch assets, what they are, they're pieces of content that accelerate this entire process. 
So instead mm. of someone getting exposed to you and they're like, they have to like watch like weeks of content in order to get on a, on a sales call, they go to that particular piece of content, right? And after they go to all of it, they're like, before I didn't know this guy, I didn't know what he did. After they're like, I know this guy, I know what he did. He showcased me proof. Like I know exactly what this is. I'm interested. And they, they book a call. And if they don't, they already went through that. So now it's just a matter of getting exposed to more content, basically, where it's only a matter of time, whether it's a day from now, a week from now, a month from now, they will book a call if they are interested, basically. Mm -hmm. So these launch assets, what are they? So the first thing, the first one is the long, the long form sales letter. Uh, so the, the long form sales letter basically is everything I just outlined. Like the point is to, to for, and it's not like, it's not like direct, it's not like a direct response heavy type of deal uh, because those things work. Those things are supposed to be used in cold, but if you use them in warm audiences, they're not like, it's, it's, it's a little bit cringe because it's kind of like you're, you're trying to force tactics into people that already know you. And that kind of has the opposite effect of what you're trying to do. So what it is, is really what it is, it's, it's a high value document where it's kind of like, Hey, this is me. Here's what I've done. Proof. Who's this, who's this for? Who's this not for? Here's why, here's like my thesis, right? Here's like my backstory. So you know where I'm coming from and why I'm even writing this to begin with. Here's my process. Here's exactly how it works. And you can do this yourself. Like you, they can literally take it and run with it if they want. Cause, cause it's not about the information. Like, like it's, it's not about the people don't need the information already exists. This, this, so they can literally take it if they want and do it themselves. But most people don't cause they know like us humans intuitively know that it's just way more efficient to do it with somebody else who's already done it. Right. So then you present them options, right? You can do it yourself or you can do it with us. And then. We inject the second concept, the second asset, which is what I call a power offer. What is a power offer? Power offer is basically, hey, this is this. Who's, here's what it's for. Here's what the goal is. This is exactly what we're going to go through. Here's exactly how it's going to work. Again, this is the goal. Here's some scarcity. Here's some urgency. If you're interested, book a call, right? Mm -hmm. so, so it's basically like a very super direct super bold, like straight offer, right? So basically we start and th those are the first two things we build. So then we put the first one, Google out, we put it out there because that's the big hitter. And because it, it basically walks people through the entire customer journey in one sitting, basically. So we put it out there. We do like a two step. A two step is basically what people call as the DM tweet or whatever you want to call it. It's basically Hey, if you want this, like, retweet, follow, whatever, and you send it to them, basically. So we do two step. We send it to the email list, right? And this is the first thing. The second thing is the power offer. We put it out there, like a, a few, if, like a few days after that, put the power offer out there. Like we do it on Twitter, we do it on email list, and the good thing about, and and the good thing about this is. Like a lot of the, the people that I usually work with, they already have some of some leverage. They already have some, some sort of email list or some sort of audience. They already have people like actively engaging. So this makes everything just way smoother instead of building everything from the ground up. Right? So then these, these, these are out there and these alone, like they just fucking rip basically. They just, they just book an absurd amount of calls because they exist permanently. So basically the strategy is we put it out there and then we constantly like retweet it like over and over and over again, every single day and every, and then we just exist on the metaverse. Like we just literally exist. We create content, we keep funneling new followers, we keep funneling new people. And those people are consistently getting exposed to that thing, right? So then the, then comes the, the, the next sort of round, which is basically, the next sort of round is a VSL, uh, a case study VSL. So once you get your first big win, like on, on the program, like when you get your first round of customers through, through those first two assets, then it's time to build a case study VSL. It's very simple. 
It doesn't, it's not a super complex format. There's basically, hey, here's exactly how this person got this result following our process, right? And it, that's literally it. Like, there's exact, like, and this is literally the thing, like, no, no, nothing held back, basically. And then, again, CTA, power off at the end, boom. Like, this, this, another surge of calls, right? Then we create, like, free assets, like, free course, like, free YouTube playlist. And then we just dump it everything. We literally dump everything on Twitter. We put it on auto retweet every day. And then we just have to exist. And the assets do all the selling for you. Because basically they're structured in such a way that they accelerate the customer journey. So mm -hmm. literally all you have to do at that point is just post content continuously. And every single new follower is entering the conversion window, is accelerating the conversion window, and the booking calls. Nice. And this is it. This is the process. <laughs> Just permanent assets, throw them on, auto retweet, throw them on YouTube, what if exists, and then there you go. Yeah, that's pretty dope. That's it. Good stuff. It's, Good it's stuff. simple, but it's super effective. Mm -hmm. But the key here is to understand all of this is only possible, and these things are only effective because we know what the market wants, and we literally create that. Like the structure of the program, the offer, like how everything is actually goes like how everything happens on the inside, everything is structured specifically to the needs of the audience. And because of that, like, and the, again, the principle is if you find out what people want and you just give them that people are going to buy. It. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Simple. <laughs> yeah. Pretty dope. How, how, how do you feel like client ascension has, or me <clears throat> just directly has, has helped you in this process? Yeah. A hundred percent. So first of all, we, we literally came up with this offer from thin air, basically like me, me and Danny were just going back and forth, back and forth in the beginning. Right. Um, and that, that was by far the most valuable thing is just having access to someone who has done this shit, right. The actual was, synthesis of the offer, right. In the position. Right. Okay, yep. Exactly. Like just have someone who's already done this, right. Just have that conversation and just, be able to go on that back and forth and literally like craft that like position and craft that like, cause uh, here's the other thing, man. Like when you're trying to start a new business, whatever it may be, like you're going to have to test shit and, and like, it's going to like what it looks like on the beginning is not what it's going to look like eventually after that doesn't matter. Like what, it, what it really helped me with is just gaining that initial momentum. Right. Cause I think that's the hardest part for everybody. Um, on, on like really and then just having like specific executables to do like on a specific timeline and like be like hey do this do this do this now for some people um you know they like to watch content or they like to join calls like i personally i just do i just like to do shit because i think everything else is is that i'm not gonna say it's a waste of time but like I'm, I'm, I prefer to be in the trenches actually doing the things that are going to get me to where I need to be. And basically with that, what it, what it did for me was just gave me so much clarity on exactly what it needed to be done. The actual offer structure, the actual offer outline, the positioning of the offer. Right. And by doing that, like, I'm just the guy, I'm a guy who makes things happen. Right. So, so by just by having that clarity, I was able to relentlessly and very fast, executed right got the first client and i just knew like and this is again from just following your principles i just knew like if i just get this massive case study then everything else just happens like inevitably basically this is, and this, it's just go ahead no go this, ahead. Is, this is what i was explaining to somebody today about just like the way i kind of like to operate and it is that if i get in a call with someone or i'm in a conversation with somebody it's always going to end with some specific action that needs to be taking because it's like you can you can join client extension and just like sit there and like not do anything but it's like it's you come in and i'm gonna force you to move or it's like you need to do this this right. this, like this date and then it's like all right round back again it's like okay now next is this 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 and then show me the results of this it's like okay here's the results all right change this to do this right it's very formulaic system where you, you <coughs> just do what i say that's what i that's what i like or literally Help yeah. people on a like, and that's it. And that, like, obviously, there's 
a lot more assets, right? And a, a lot more valuable things inside the community. There's, you got training on like a bunch of different things, right? That are gonna help you in business. Uh, and also the network effect just, um, I've had people reach out to me inside Client Ascension about my stuff too, like directly. It's just being connected to, to you just wanna be in that, in spaces where just by existing, like you're creating basically network effect and, and, and some sort of leverage. It's existing, of your... existing next to people who do what you do and some people who are yeah. significantly farther than you. Yeah, that's like the best thing. That's it. You just, you just absorb everything. And, and, and Cloud Essential was really key, especially in the start, because again, it's just, it was that clear cut clarity, those clear, clear cut executables. Here's exactly what it is. This is exactly how we're going to frame it. This is exactly what you need to do. This is the exact timeline in which you need to accomplish these things. And also accountability. Like, cause you know, sometimes maybe I was taking a little bit longer and I'd get fucking Daniel just message me. What's up? Why is this not done yet? Why is this not going like what's happening? And, and that's key too. Cause sometimes you get some bottleneck. Sometimes you get some, um, you get stuck on something for whatever reason. Right. And you know, people just naturally shy away when that happens as having someone to like directly call you out on that and, and hold you accountable and make sure you, you actually do the things that are going to get you the results that you're looking for. That's what's going to make all the difference. There's, there's some, so that things, there's some things off the top of my head that I kind of just like want to share with you in, in, in regards to extending your LTV on your clients. What I think you should do is you, you help somebody scale up. And then I think you should build sales teams for them. I think you should do that's that. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you have the I'm same problem. Ready. It's, it's it make, that's the most logical progression. So, it, so here's how it works, right? It's very simple. Um, I know I crush on this, particular in these types of offers. Like I can just, jump on a call, no, because I'm the one creating the offers, right? So I can jump on a call, no script, no nothing. And I can one call close, basically most people, anybody who's qualified, I'll one call close. Like there's, I don't have, so basically what happens is I come in, I do some of the sales calls initially, because a lot of the people I'm going to work with is not going to be as good as me at, at that particular thing. What I'm going to do is I come in, I take some of the sales calls, right? Piff these people, they pay, piff meaning paid in full for those of you that don't, that don't know. Um, so I close these people and then I'm basically I'm recording all of these calls, right? And I'm, I'm talking to my guys, right? Because because initially I just want to run up the score as much as humanly possible. And I also want them to learn how to sell their own offer, which is very important. If you're ever going to scale uh, at a, to a certain level, you're going to be, you're going to have to extrapolate that process into somebody else. Basically, that's how you build an actual sales team. You need to like transfer your whole thing into another person, which is not an easy thing to do. So, so for me, it's either one or two things I could sit around and I could build these scripts and I could, you know, role play with these guys. Instead, I just get on these calls. I literally create a process from my own head because I just have so much experience on this that I could just do it. I create the process and then I just repeat that process. And once it like, it's working super effectively, we're talking like 40, 50% close rates, right? Just feed them all these call recordings, just binge watch that over and over and over again, literally integrate it in your head, put some reps in. And then like, once we, like, once we stop seeing that we're hitting like 80 to a hundred K a month, right? I'm like, yo, we're getting a lot of people in this, right? So now what we need to do, like, and the opportunity vehicle is, is good for, for a salesperson. That's the other thing you need to understand. Like if, yeah. if you want a salesperson, you need a good opportunity vehicle for them because otherwise they're going to churn on them, right? Mm -hmm. So you need to understand that if you don't have a good opportunity vehicle, like you can, like you can place all the reps you want, but they're not going to stay for, for the long run. And that's what you want with your salespeople. You want them to stay for the long run because the more they stay, the better they're going to be. The better they're going to be, the more money they are going to make and you are going to make. So basically, 
as soon as I, as soon as the opportunity vehicle is good enough, I'm like, okay, now I'm going to get someone from my own network. Cause I know a lot of these closers cause I was one, right. I'm going to get someone already has experience, like already has sold is actually vetted. Right. And then I'm going to do the exact same process. I'm going to rent them up and I'm going to go back to back with them. So they're going to do like initially, they're not going to do as many calls, right? Like for, for a week, we're going to go back to back. I'm going to do more calls, but he's basically just adapting and ramping up and then fully on board next week. Um, and then just the business has every single component to properly scale. And at that point, all you need to do is just hire for whatever other positions you need to hire for in terms of fulfillment and fucking exist in the metaverse. Just post as much <laughs> as humanly possible. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, brother. Well, I'll try to wrap this up, but as, as kind of like a closing remark, if somebody has been sitting here and they're thinking about joining client ascension, what would you say to them? Bro, I would say, what I would say is, is just, obviously I would say, just do it yeah. <laughs> obviously, but to actually give you some reasoning behind that, if you're like, if, if, if you're stuck at five, 10 K a month, right. And you're doing some sort of service or some sort of, the likelihood is you are probably doing something commoditized. You're probably trying to play in a, in a playing field where you don't have any inherent advantages. And you're probably trying to sell something that millions of other people are already selling. There's no issues with this, but what you need to understand is if you actually want to get to the next level, if you actually want to like start scaling like an actual business and then get to like 30, 40, 50 K months, like these levels and, and, and just scale over time, you need to get in a circle of people who are ahead of the market. You need to get in a circle of people where basically people are giving you ideas and, 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 and frames in which you can frame your offers and your products and your services in a way that's going to be ahead of the marketplace, because this is how this, this state, this business thing works. There, there's something called market cycles, meaning there's going to be offers and products and services that basically every, every one of those has, has a specific time span in which you can capitalize asymmetrically and establish yourself as, as like the guy to go to for, for that particular thing. And a lot of you guys are, are, are entering those markets super late. So what you need to do is you need to get into a place where the new, the, the trends are being made. And this is what client ascension is ultimately. It's a place where everybody is actually ahead of the market and is coming up with ideas and potential new business ideas and offers that you can capitalize asymmetrically, gain a huge amount of results and traction super quickly and establish yourself as the guy by creating results and, and, and getting case studies and, and social proof ahead of everybody else. This is why you need to join. Cause otherwise you're just going to keep competing with all these other guys and you'll stay stuck at 10 K a month and you still stay fucking just grinding and, and putting all this effort where you could just connect with the right people, gain some sort of unfair advantage and actually leverage that to make way more money and work way less. All the, so that's why you should join. All the little Twitter business gurus selling their courses and coaching programs are just back scraps of whatever client Ascension did a year ago and already milked completely. So yeah, <laughs> that's, that's just, that's just the truth. There's, there's, that's, that's what that's it just is. The truth. <laughs> that's funny. All right, brother. I appreciate you very much. I'm going to leave links to all of David's stuff down in the comments. So if anybody is interested in working with him, or if you want to come hang out with him inside Client Ascension, I'm going to leave a link to that below in the description as well. But thank you, everybody. Yes, thank you, sir. Absolutely.